Oh, how's everyone doing? Oh, you alright? It's cold there, uh, back again. Um, for those that subscribe to me, you'll know that I do videos on things I've got experience of, life experience, things like that. Um, today's video is going to be on mandatory drug testing and drugs within prisons. Um, I just got out of Forest Bank Prison, which is Cat B Prison. Uh, got out of there on Friday, um, which was the 10th of February 2017. Um, I was in there for, I think, my second time now. I've been through there. Um, while I was there, um, our lad was uh, found unconscious in his cell. Um, guy who was 37 called Darren Rawlinson. He was on G1, which was um, a drug-free wing, and sadly, uh, he actually died of a drug overdose. Um, the fact that people are dying of drug overdoses on drug-free wings uh, tells you everything you need to know about the prison system um, and like spice and drugs and everything else that goes on within behind bars and stuff. Um, this is the letter talking about the actual death from the prison. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. That was like that was like hung on the wall in the wing. Um, so while I was actually working, but I had I, I was a cleaner on the, the induction wing, which was H1. Um, and because of my job and the fact that there was risk involved and stuff, because I was like, you're in a privileged position and all that shit. Right? It was um, that's my drug. That's my uh, mandatory drug test form, uh, which I pissed. What it happens, right, with mandatory drug testing, right, it came in, um, it was first trialled in 1996, um, and it was, at first, I think they did it over eight prisons, and then it was rolled out from there. Um, it's a very expensive, like, thing for them to do, I think. That's why I don't think they piss people that often uh, within prisons. Um like it tests for everything it tests for every drug across the board the only drug it doesn't test for are steroids um, the reason it doesn't test for steroids and they won't test for steroids is because steroids it, the blood tests and stuff and the test to to detect steroids is actually 1700 pound per person which obviously they're not going to do um, so what happens right so we came off exercise um, and then one of the screws said to me and a couple of the other lads, right lads, straight into the holding cell in the hub. The hub's just like a little corridor thing. He said straight into the hub, um, you guys are getting pissed, like mandatory drug tested. So we sat in this room and then by one by one we went in. So you go into this little room, there's two people there, they, they work for Sodexo Justice Services, um, but they're collecting the drugs for an external company. Um, they obviously do the testing and stuff. You go in. Um, you sit down, you tell them your name, your prison number, all that sort of stuff. And then you stand up, you go to a toilet, you piss into this plastic container. You've got to fill it above like a certain level. Um, and then I think it's split between two containers. Um, in front of you, you sign the seals and then the seals are placed over the lid. Um, and they've got like a unique reference number which identifies that sample as being from you and your prison number and your person. Um, it can take seven to, it takes about on average seven to seven to eight working days to come back. Um, it, like I said, it is stringent. It's a very very stringent thing. When you do your piss test, you get all this sort of stuff. You get all this sort of like tells you everything you need to know, like about the procedure and everything. The, the weird thing is with the drug testing, right? Is I've no history of drugs. I've never, I don't do drugs, it's not It's not my thing, you know what I mean? Um, obviously in prison there's obviously big problems with drugs, like you used to be known as legal highs, like your spice and stuff. They're now known as new NPS, new psychoactive substances. Um, and the simple fact is, is like the, the spice runs, the, the, the spice is behind most of the violent incidents, kickoffs, um, medical attention, like the calls and stuff like that because of spice <clears throat> because people are getting in debt with spice people are using spice as currency to buy things people are taking spice for the first time becoming hooked on it and um just changing you see a big big change in people when they're on the spice there's a lad that was on the cleaners on h1 that worked alongside me liked the lad a lot um, and then he got addicted to these uh, he got addicted to the spice and stuff <clears throat> um, and he started stealing and stuff like that to, to feed his habit. Um, when people are on, hooked on spice, they would literally steal from their own mother to get that fixed. It, it, it's that bad. Um, 
it's crazy. Like the simple fact is, is like I, I got my canteen yeah, like last Thursday, right? Because obviously I was getting some munchies for the lads before I got out of prison. And this is what was in my canteen bag, yeah. This. And what to do if someone passes out through the use of psychoactive substances, so your spice. If someone falls ill, often what you what you're to do to help them. That just makes a mockery of the prison system. There shouldn't be drugs in prison, right? Listen, I'm a prisoner, yeah. I speak out for the boys, yeah. You know what I mean. But what I'm trying to do here is show the mockery of the prison system and for what it is. There's, it's a fucking joke, man. Like the fact that a lad was allowed and able to overdose on a drug-free wing, right? Is is just just. That little sentence though, died of a drug overdose on a drug free wing, tells you everything you need to know about the state of the prisons in the UK. Like I say, the screws are not arsed, they've got a, they then like, they don't care, they just like, they don't bother. They'll walk down the landing, they'll smell f spice, which to those that don't know, it smells like fish, so it's known as fish in prison, or spiz, or spice. Um, it smells like fish, so the screw will be walking down the landing, they'll smell it, and they'll go, oh, fucking hell, that stinks, and then they'll just carry on walking. They don't care, it's, it, it, they're, in their eyes, they don't get paid enough to, to challenge the drugs and stuff like that. There was one senior officer that was like, he was very proactive and stuff on the drug side, um, but psh, it, they don't care. It's a losing battle. Drugs are coming in via parcels. They're coming in via fucking uh, visits. Um, screws are bringing stuff in. Um, they're getting in every which way. Um, the actual thing is as well, um, Forest Banker actually, at the moment, I don't know if this is out there, but uh, not many people know, but the through speaking to the screws and stuff, because I was a cleaner, you get to know the screws on a, on a decent basis, right? And to be honest with you, the screws are spot on. They're just there to do a job. They're run ragged, they're understaffed, they're overworked and in their eyes they're underpaid and you know what i've got to be honest apart from one or two officers that were jobs worse um some cracking screws in there i've got to be honest like so obviously you get there's good and bad in every society yeah for, for even from cons perspective yeah some of them are good lads some of them are assholes you know what i mean there's good and bad in every scenario um and like i say i've got to be honest i didn't have a problem with any of the screws while i was there there was just one guy that really wound me up and that's because his attitude was shit and he spoke to me like shit um, and I, I wouldn't fucking take it, so I used to fuck him off. I just never spoke to the kid. Um, I, he knew I didn't like him, and, I, and he knew I didn't like him. It's simple as that. Um, but like I say, back to the drugs thing. Um, the drugs testing, right? The lads that if you're if you're on a drug free wing or a detox wing, right? Um, these people should be getting tested regular, right? But even if you get caught with the drugs in your system, there's a standard defence. And the standard defence is, is is actually documented within this within this paperwork I've got uh, with me. Now it states in the paperwork, right, that you can be pardoned from the charge, like excused, if you unknowingly took the substance, right. So in other words, right. So say I so I, so say that I'm blazing fish on the regular on the regs, yeah. Right? I'm blazing it, I'm blazing it, I'm blazing it. I get pissed, yeah. Then I just say to this, I just when the I appeal my, so I, my, I do my piss test, my piss test, piss test even, comes back positive. Then I say, right, um, or a mate give me a bit of, my mate give me a, what I thought was a burn, like a fag burn, tobacco, right? And I thought it was just that, and obviously it's had spice in it, and that despite me, and I didn't know. Um, that's, your, that's your way around it. Um, and people are getting away with it as well, so there's no deterrent really for, there's no real punishment for it. I mean, if you plead guilty and stuff, right, it, obviously if you're a cleaner, yeah, you get sacked from your job straight away, that's standard, right? <clears throat> then you go down to the block, you get what they call a nicking, right, where you go before like a prison, like high, someone high up in the prison, and then you've got to plead your case to them, they read the thing to you, you've got to then say your piece and stuff. Um, a lot of lads are seeking like outside um, adjudicators and stuff to actually make the decision because, um, saying look I got spiked and they can't disprove that fact so because they can't disprove it all that prisoners are doing is using that loophole to get out of getting fucked over for piss tests again the prisoners are winning that, that's what we do right the screws are always one step behind it's as simple as that right um, they don't give a fuck man honest to god like the, the amount of incidents I've seen due to spice people collapsing people getting slashed stabbed kicked off assaulted um, swilled with piss swilled with hot water uh, people having the TV stolen because the old money for sp uh, for the spice um, everything everything surrounds that people's mentality changes you've got a lot of lads in prison with mental health issues right um, 
they're getting mental health medication, but they're actually swapping it for fucking for spice because just like any drug in prison, it's got a fucking like um it's got a it's got a value. You know what I mean? Um, there's so many drugs in prisons as well that the overall price of drugs have come down because like obviously it's supply and demand, right? If your person, if you if you're the only person on the wing that's that's packing, yeah, that's got some. Right, you can charge a premium, you know, because everyone, it's super addictive, the drug, right? It's more addictive than heroin and crack cocaine, right? So you can charge a premium. If you've got three or four other lads, right, on the wing selling fucking spice, the same as you, if you try and charge a premium, then the lads are going to think, fuck that, and they're going to go to person B. Person B's undercutting you because he's selling it cheaper than you, you know what I mean? Like, fucking five for a little one ball and stuff like that, little one pop and that. It's going on. And the, the price of drugs in prison has come down. But again, in the same regard, it's also going up in the sense of that, like, the, 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 the amounts of drug, the spice you get for your money is going down because obviously it is that addictive and people are, like, rattling behind the door for it and stuff. And the states you see people in is unreal. I mean, on the cleaners, out of the two cleaners, out of all the cleaners uh, that were tested, I think there's about three or four that weren't, um, two failed the drug test. Um, one appealed it. Um, the, one of my mates, I won't mention his name, he was a painter, he got sacked uh, for having spice in his system or cannabinoids <clears throat> as it shows up. Obviously, tan cannabinoids are like part of the THC uh, chemical build up, makeup of spice, obviously, because it, it's like chemicals and stuff like that. Um, but like I say, it, it's very unproductible drug as well. It affects everyone in different ways. People have got different tolerances in prison. They say when you go to prison that your tolerances to drugs are actually the, the greatly they go down a lot because you're not getting as often, but that's nonsense really because people are getting it. Do you know what makes me laugh though? There's lads that are on, like, the lads that are on the detox wing and the recovery wing, right, which obviously both drug-free wings are supposed to be drug-free wings, what they're doing, they're on a methadone program, so they'll go down to the medical arch two or three times a day and they'll get methadone. Um, they get it in like a little cup, they swig it, they, they neck it, and they're supposed to swallow it in front of the screw, right? Now, I've seen lads that have just like, they've just put it in the mouth, like swilled it to the side and then just walked off. <coughs> I've seen lads walk away and spit it into a plastic cup as well and then sell it back on the wing. Because obviously, again, drugs, it's got a value, people. Drugs have values, man. It's as simple as that. You're never going to stop drugs. Mandatory drug testing, yeah, it, it is... It's there to deter prisoners and stuff, but when you can get away with it by saying that someone spiked you or, like... You picked up a dimp, right? Oh, it's embarrassing to say, but people can say I picked up a dimp and I smoked it and then I felt all woozy and I thought, oh shit, I've been, I, I, it's spice. There's so many, all you're doing as prisoners then, when, you, when you're caught positive, you're just using the prison system rules, the prison rules against the prison and people are getting away with it. So more for the prison, man, all power to the boys, you know what I mean? But then people wonder why, obviously, that drugs are so rife in prisons. Um, Prison numbers are going up. Prison officer numbers are going down. Doesn't take a fucking genius to work out what's going on. You know what I mean? Um, but again, the lad that died and stuff, God bless him, he rest in peace. I mean, he was going to get out about the same time as me. And to die in prison, I don't know if it... I don't know if it was purposely because he didn't want to get out and he was freaking out because he, like, he'd been in for a while or just because he just... Like, he just was having a good time getting on it and he had too much and stuff. Um, but again, my thoughts and prayers with his family. It's a sad state of affairs. With a drug test and stuff like that, it's fucking. It was a piece of piss. Um, if you get caught and stuff, and you you piss positive, and you like you you admit your guilt, you can get like CC, like cell confinement. Uh, obviously, you can get you lose your IEP status. So like it it's called IEP means incentives earned privileges. So like you've got basic, standard, um, and then in you've got. Basic entry, standard and enhanced. When you're enhanced, it means you can get more money, you get an extra visit a month, all this sort of stuff. But it's a minor, really. And then you, or you get put on closed visits as well, so you can't obviously pick up parcels on visits and stuff. Uh, but again, it's all a minor. You might get a few days down the block or something, and the next thing, you're back on the wing, you're back smoking the drugs. There's no deterrent within drugs. I mean, like I say, when, when, when the prison are giving you this, how to fucking, like, how to act and stuff, and to if someone has like an effects and stuff. It just shows that they're aware of the problem 
they can't do fuck all about it. They're powerless. They're, and like I say, what annoyed me right while I was in prison, I watched that Justice Secretary, whatever she's called, that Joker, Liz Truss. She's useless. She's fucking out of place. She's so in over her head. It's scary as a prisoner. It's scary that this woman makes the rules for us. You know what I mean? She's clueless, man. What does she know about crime? Fuck all. Um, anyway, she said, oh, mandatory drug testing. We're introducing mandatory drug testing. We're dropping 2,500 officers. 2,500 officers, that's nothing, man. Shit. That ain't stopping fuck all. And the mandatory drug testing, sweetheart, isn't a new thing that you've brought in. It's been in force since 1996, you daft bitch. You're clueless, man. Prisons are run by prisoners, man. Prisoners are flourishing. They're, setting, they're selling pure shit from jail. People going back in on recall, blasting out the fucking drugs. There's no deterrent, man. Like I say, the prison is a butlins with bars, yeah? Free, free meals a day, roof over your head, warm cell, TV, drugs, legalised, mobile phones, free use of the gym, courses if you want to do them, um, prison alcohol, hooch, yeah? Getting off your fucking nut. You know, some of my funniest times were in jail, yeah? And if I went back tomorrow, so be it, you know what I mean? I'd handle that shit straight out. Um, um, but yeah, it's not good where people are dying on fucking drugs, man. I don't like that. You know what I mean? Everyone does a bit of this and a bit of that, but I don't want people dying, yeah, man. Um, but again, to the mandatory drug system, it's useless. No point in it. And they're not testing as enough people as they should be. Right. Uh, listen, guys, I'll leave it there. Thank you for your time. Uh, subscribe to me. Follow me on Twitter. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.